situation too. Let's be real. Tara, I aspire to the fish merchant. Okay. Thanks for the three dollars there too. All right. Timothy Dexter. Okay. What's going on here? The mega oof. There's some great television I had for the This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Thanks, Skillshare. Very cool. Well, but there's enough small businesses with Pizza Hut roofs out there to tell you that such a thing is ultimately futile. As for most okay. of us, we tend to have our fair share of good and bad luck throughout our lives. But every now and then, RNGs is... I MS Paint YouTubers. Gotta appreciate the man. This reminds me of another YouTuber that used MS Paint. The guy had really big chins and he was always like, talking like this, he's like, I fucking hate it, right? Or I sort of fucking, st like, it's always kind of like that in YouTube age restricted Senpai, content. that's it, we need to play a game of Jeopardy anime slash off-brand anime edition. Sweet holy Jesus, Simma genius. <laughs> I mean, uh, perhaps, but uh, I'd have to set that up somehow. That'd be interesting to do. Yeah, grade A underage. Yeah, you guys got it. You guys got it. Smiles upon some what drooling little loaf of. child and says, You, my son, you shall be the one with all the figgy pudding. That child was Timothy Dexter. Dexter was born in Malden, Massachusetts in 1747. Malden. He had a humble upbringing, dropping He's out of school mauled, as an eight-year-old to work as a farmhand and a leather worker. But Malden. Dexter thought he deserved better. So when he grew up, he married one Elizabeth Frothing Ham, a rich wow. widow in need of company. Gold digging achieved, he Hell began his yeah. quest to become a true Hell aristocrat. Yeah. As his first step, he thinks, hmm, all the rich guys I know are in positions of power. I should run for office. Now, the town of Malden wasn't much keen on appointing a bumbling second grade dropout, but after rejecting dozens of petitions sent in by Dexter, they eventually gave up and decided to just make some shit up, leading to Dexter becoming the official informer of deer, tasking informer. him with keeping logs on the local deer population. And over Damn. statistics of does and bucks alike, Dexter ruled with an iron fist, triumphantly concluding what many had already known that there weren't any deer in Malden, Massachusetts. There was Satisfied none. with his political career. Keep making me happy. Dude, Night Sky 2 B uh, 228. This is a ten dollars, dude. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing that dude. Booty slaps to you. Dexter then set his sights on greater financial ventures. So a little okay. history, in 1775, as part of our growing independence from Britain, the Continental Congress decided to establish their own currency, known as the Continental Who Dollar. Keeps track of these then the Revolutionary War started, and it dawned on people that these pieces of paper wouldn't be very useful in a giant pile of Who's wet this all down? patriots, causing their value to do one of those horny eagle death spirals. Then the Congress did, you know, that stupid thing that every high schooler learns is stupid, not invading Russia in winter, but the other one, practically yeah making them worth less than their weight in paper and ink. And wouldn't you know it, a good portion of the Continental Army was paid with these. So by the time the war ended, many veterans were left totally destitute. The aristocrats were like, well, these grass-eating untermenches did kind of give us a country, so whatever, we'll throw them a few cents and take this trash off their hands. Dexter was like, ooh, ooh, I'm a wealthman, I I'm gonna do that too. And he spent the majority of his savings buying a boatload after boatload of the 1780s equivalent of blockbuster gift cards. By all accounts, this should have been his ruin, but by some stroke of of luck, after the Constitution was ratified, the new government decided that they trade Continentals for Treasury bonds worth 1% of their face value. Doesn't oh. sound like much, but keep in mind, Dexter bought thousands of crates of bills for fractions of pennies apiece. So as buybacks began across the country, his stockpile appreciated massively in value, and this informer of deer realized that, for the first time, there were a lot of bucks in Malden. But just because he Damn. was now a man of the upper crust doesn't mean he let it go to his head. Sure, he might have purchased the most luxurious chateau that money could buy through daily play Playboy Mansion style ragers and commissioned over 40 statues of America's greatest heroes, one 40? of which was of Damn. himself, with a plaque calling him, quote, the greatest philosopher in the Western world. Damn, dude. Hell Despite yes. his incredibly <laughs> tacky displays of wealth, his contemptuous contemporaries oh, still saw him for the loud, illiterate rube he was. So they started giving him deliberately awful investment tips in order to get him to bankrupt himself. One such piece of advice was that he should ship warming pans to the Caribbean. For those of you born after 1850, a warming oh. pan's this dish on a long pole that you fill up with hot coals to warm up your bed. Not much use in a tropical paradise. But Dexter no. was undeterred by such frivolous things as logic, went ahead and sent over 40,000 of them to the West Indies. When they arrived, 
arrived, the locals didn't really know what they were looking at and decided to use them as ladles for the sugar and molasses refineries. Hell and by yeah. the end of it, Dexter sold every single one at a markup of nearly 80%. Frustrated Damn. that their plan backfired, the elites then told him to literally carry coal to Newcastle, which is an old idiom used to describe a pointless task based off the fact that Newcastle was one of the world's biggest producers of coal. Damn, the only th idioms Dexter knew about all involved different man. animals shitting in the woods. So he took their word on good faith and went along with it. But by some divine providence, by the time the shipment arrived, the Newcastle coal miners had all gone on strike, and Dexter once again cleared the entire shipment with a hefty profit. He was like, man, I am so smart. By this point, he was pretty confident in his speculation skills, so he started making seemingly far-fetched ventures all by himself. One time he had a bunch of stray cats rounded up for basically free, which sounds like herding cats, but what do I know? And he sent them to the Caribbean, where they were gobbled up en masse. Not like eaten, but purchased to deal with all the rat infestations. Yeah. In another instance, he bought up just about every whale bone in Boston. And coincidentally, at the same time in France, men started wearing corsets too for some reason. Demand went way up, Dexter's laughing. Now from an outside perspective- God, this man! What a fucking chap! <laughs> hey, damn, dude! The dumbest rat- this- this holy, holy fuck- yeah, this nonsense is real, dude. Holy fuck, dude. The actual Forrest Gump. I'm actually impressed by this guy. At the end of the day, Dexter was a very shrewd merchant. So at this point in my research, I was like, wait a minute, is or he Daniel. smart? Then I learned about his life outside of business. Dexter considered himself extremely knowledgeable in just about every you topic. One, dude. Keywords considered himself. For example, he once stumbled upon a guy painting a sign to go along with the newly built statue of Jefferson. And when he saw that the sign called Jefferson, the writer of the What's Declaration of Independence, name? Uh, Timothy Dexter. Dexter lost his freaking mind and insisted that Jefferson did not pen the DOI, but rather the Constitution. Spoiler alert, not remotely true. He was in France at the time. An easy mistake to make today, sure. But this was only like 10 years after the fact. That's like someone today saying, Obama didn't kill bin Laden, dumbass. That was yeah. Bill Clinton. Anyway, when the painter refused to change the inscription, Dexter started shooting at him with a long rifle until he complied. Real gentil. Dexter made Jesus. sure to surround himself with the requisite number of weirdos to maintain this level tossing a coin your way oh i toss a coin to your witch eh? to your youtuber all right <laughs> thank you mystic mode for the fat 25 thank you so much oh my god indeed thank you very much it's very generous of you 25 million dollars in the weeb arena can you believe that holy shit making a rain in here um dragon tacos Six with 33 still here haven't left yet thank you dragon tacos uh, I'm not sure how that would sound, but I, I I imagine tacos made of the dragon made tail meat, you know, that's Toru's tail meat, so maybe it could taste good, I don't know of delusion, one of which was Jonathan Plummer, a man whom Dexter paid to be his poet laureate, writing oh. only the most laudatory odes in his honor. Mind you, this wasn't just your run-of-the-mill wise and wizened wordsmith. Jonathan sold fish for a living, Hell and yeah. porn. You just kind of went on. Dude, fish and porn. I, I like did this my man. cinnamon roll boy pull ref dirty. Oh, he better pull a krillin and get him the hottest, most loving wife ever. Pelican Enterprises. Okay, like goddamn, dude. I can't believe fish and porn. That's that's the way we go in life, dude. Along with the whole thing for the pocket change. Besides his entourage, Dexter occasionally spent time with the total geeds known as his family. <laughs> Both make he had two children smell. whom the New England well, Historical Society that pussy, describes yeah. as a half mad drunk and a completely mad drunk respectively. That's why they call and he couldn't taco. stand his wife on account of her perceived constant nagging. To the point where he would tell guests he was unmarried and that he just had a ghost in his house. Just like, oh yeah, that's oh. a sea hag. You know, mansion built on some old Indian shipwreck Damn. or something. Timmy, please. I'm cold and my hands are rheumatic. Find it in your heart to light the fireplace for me? Yeah, plenty of that in hell, you banshee bitch. One day, oh. in a massive stroke of ego, Dexter decided to fake his own death, complete with a lavish funeral service just to see who would show up. Lucky for him, about 3,000 people from all walks of life turned up. Though initially staying out of sight, he soon noticed that his wife wasn't crying. So in response, he jumped out and started hitting her upside the head with a cane in front of everybody. But as his Damn. true mortality grew closer, Dexter knew he needed a legacy and decided to pen his memoirs, titled oh. A Pickle for the knowing ones, which was basically just 20 pages of unhinged ranting about politics, religion, his wife, and whatever else came to mind. No punctuation. Random capitalization. Wow. The most amazing spelling I've ever seen. Here's some excerpts. George Washington. <laughs> Attitude. Philosopher. 
tobacco, general. And this is all just from the first few lines. General. The entire book is written like this. And just like everything else the guy did, the this... thing sold like fucking hotcakes. Why does anybody even try? The best part is that when he got complaints about the total lack of grammatical anything, in the second edition of the book, he put an extra page at the end full of nothing but punctuation marks with a little note saying that anyone who felt like whining could just stick them wherever they wanted. Dexter died. <laughs> Damn, dude. What a fucking savage. Dude, this guy sounds like a fucking riot, dude. <laughs> died in 1806, and by and large, he probably should have ended up in Davy Jones's locker. But given yeah. the circumstances, I imagine the big man upstairs dropped his big deck of mortal soul trading cards at just the right moment, letting yeah. him slip through the pearly gates undetected. And legend has it that to this day, if you pray to the name Timothy Dexter, he'll look upon you kindly and share his skills with you all. Damn. Wait a minute. Share. Skill. <gasps> ah! Skillshare is an online learning. Oh, okay. All right. That's where we're going there. Okay. Yeah, the Skillshare. All right. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. The, the ads there. We're, we're, we're good. We don't need no ads. <laughs> he dabbed for the first time in history. Yes, he was the one. An I would old believe one, it. but a good one. Get ready to use your keyboard. Make sure. That was a good one. I like this Timothy Dexter guy. Uh, The anti-cheat. When you 